So how about uh, suicide? Do you see that one as um, explicable? Well, uh, I'm not, I haven't thought about that to the same extent. Have you thought about it? I mean, um, um, yes. Okay. So, uh, all right. I mean, I can easily think of psychological explanations in, ma in mimetic explanations, perhaps. Um, genetic explanations for suicide, do, do you have them? Well, uh, I think in principle, many of these things come back to the same couple of places where our field has um, instantiated a bad assumption. And so the assumption about individual selection, where lineage selection might be um, a more powerful concept, has caused us, I think, to miss the boat on all three of these uh, characteristics. What I would say is, let's just take a, uh, an example of the Middle East, for example. Let's say you have two populations in the Middle East, and both of them correctly recognize that 500 years from now, they are not both likely to be there, that it is likely to be one or the other, but not both. Were that the case, then any fitness that was realized in the present day would be more or less meaningless if you were in the population that blinked out 200 years from now. So you would find a rational investment in behaviors that discounted individual fitness and prioritized lineage fitness. In other words, you would see extraordinary levels of self-sacrifice in the interest of ensuring that the population to which the individual doing the sacrifice uh, belonged was the one that continued to exist. I don't know how clear that was, but the basic idea is in extraordinary circumstances, like for example, a piece of land that isn't getting any bigger and is fully inhabited and has competing lineages uh, that cannot simply live peaceably together, that um, suicidal self-sacrifice might be rational. Now again, naturalistic fallacy being what it is, just because something is doesn't mean it ought to be, and I'm not defending it as a good thing, but I'm saying, can we understand it rationally? If we think about adaptation occurring at the lineage level, I think it's not hard to see cases where um, suicide, I mean, really it's one step past getting on a ship and going over the horizon to see if you can find a new landmass that nobody's discovered. That's a near suicidal behavior that's somewhat comprehensible. Actual suicide can make sense if um, the circumstances are extraordinary enough. And I would also say closer to home that if we look at cases where people uh, commit suicide in our own culture, very frequently they are beset by the sense that they are beyond worthless, that they have no value, that their existence is simply taking up resource. And so you can imagine that this could be a matter of kin selection or lineage selection. That if you, and I think most people who believe that uh, in our culture are not calculating correctly, they have bad data on what, the, what value they might contribute, but nonetheless, were you to be triggered to imagine that you had no value and that you were simply burning up resources, then this is a rational course of action. I do not think it's helpful to couch this kind of explanation in Darwinian terms. Da Darwinian evolution is about the natural selection of replicators. And the primary replicators we're talking about are genes, and the vast majority of biological evolution, and you've been advocating the priority of this genetic selection, um, producing bodies and brains the way they are. And now we come on to things like nationalism, things like um, individuals sacrificing themselves for the sake of the long-term future of their lineage, their society, their nation. Um, th this is not Darwinism. This is, this is something else. This is, this is a, a, a complicated mixture of human-level affairs, which historians deal with, sociologists deal with, psychologists deal with. This is not Darwinism. It's not helpful to... It, it's, 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 it's not helpful to try to couch this in what, what sounds like Darwinian terms. Well, let me ask you a question. Let's just see where it is that we disagree. My claim is that 
if it is true, and I obviously can't say if it is or it isn't, but if it is true that things like xenophobia, genocide, suicide are products of adaptive evolution, that in order to address these things going forward in a useful way, understanding their nature is likely to be beyond helpful and may even be essential. So to give one example, let's say that the impulse to genocide is something that lurks inside human beings, awaiting certain indicators that it is the moment for that program to be triggered. Were that the case, you would want people to engage that question ahead of time when they were in possession of their full faculties and to recognize that they might have a program within them that violates the values that they believe are their, their guide. Yes, but I think I would prefer to say that these impulses are byproducts of something primitive and evolved. So something like genocide. Um, we know that chimpanzees, for example, um, do practice genocide against rival groups of, of, ch of chimpanzees. One can make a genetic evolution case that says something like this. In our wild ancestry, uh, using the Hamilton idea of living in villages, living in small bands, um, the companions that you know that are familiar to you from day to day, everybody you know is a, is, a, is a relative, strangers are not. And so killing strangers, uh, genocide, killing neighboring bands of people like happens in some parts of the New Guinea Highlands, for example, um, that could be regarded as a byproduct of genetic natural selection. And something like the, um, the Nazi atrocities could be regarded as a manifestation of that genetically evolved um, tendency, but it's in a totally different context. And um, of course, I agree with you that the, the, we need to resist the, we need to rebel against the, the selfish genes, but I prefer not to talk about the things that we do in our modern society in a sort of straightforward biological way, but rather to say these are relics, byproduct relics of our genetic past. And one can do, th do this all the time, and I think that we do it, we do it a lot. We do things like um, the desire for business executives to have a bigger, thicker office carpet, that kind of thing. This is all, um, you, can, you can interpret that in a sort of biological way as, being, as representing something like uh, something that came from our biological past. But you have to be very careful when you do it. Mm. And uh, I don't, I, I think it's very often not very helpful to try to apply Darwinian ideas directly to um, the sorts of things that we, we get in, in modern society, whether it's horrible mechanized warfare or, or executives demanding bigger desks or, or whatever it is. Um, I, I just think we've got to be very careful in, in applying. I mean, I, I am in favor of evolutionary psychologists who do this kind of thing, but I think they do do it in a, in a careful way. And, and I, I think we've got to be very cautious in the way we do it. 